In today's video, I'm going to show you a fully automatic water change system that is so easy and inexpensive that anybody can hook one of these up. Stick around and check this out. All right, YouTube, back here in the fish room, I have two brand new 75 gallon tanks and I want to have them set up on some type of automatic water change system that I can just set it and forget it. No more buckets, no more hoses, nothing like that. So let me show you what the plans are. So the goal is to take the fresh water that's in my RO reservoir, pump that into the new 75 gallon tanks, and hook those up with a drain to allow the old water to drain out. Now even though I'm going to be using RO water as my water source and supply, you can also hook this up to your home's tap water. It's just the parts and the configuration is going to be slightly different, which I'll explain a little further later into the video. Back to the build. Okay, now I need to point out that in order for the system to work, you will need to drill your fish tank. Now before you go tucking your tail between your legs and running off like a scared puppy, just trust me that drilling a fish tank is not hard. You just have to take it slow. Now I'm not going to get into the details and demonstrate how to drill a tank. There are already a lot of great tutorials on the YouTube platform that show how to drill tanks. My advice, go watch a few of those, but just trust me, at the end of the day, it's not hard. Now you can clearly see where I drilled this tank and installed this one inch bulkhead. It's several inches below the rim of the aquarium, and unless I change this, that's where my water level is going to be. Well, that's not where I want my water line to be. I want it to be several inches higher. So let me show you how we're going to address that. Okay, so all we need to do to raise the water level in the tank from where the tank is drilled and the bulkhead is installed is come up with an overflow similar to this. Now this is four parts total. Total cost is around $5. It consists of a one inch slip low profile overflow a one inch PVC coupler, a one inch 90 degree street elbow, and a small piece of one inch PVC pipe. All right, so now we have the DIY overflow installed in the bulkhead, and you can clearly see how this is gonna function and raise the water level in the tank. Now we only installed a one inch bulkhead. We didn't need to install a real big bulkhead because the flow of the water coming in is gonna be pretty low. A one inch bulkhead is going to be more than enough. So anyways, let's go ahead and take a look behind the tank so you can see what else is going on. All right, now behind the tank, you can see coming out of that bulkhead is a small piece of one inch PVC into a T-fitting. Coming out of the top of the T-fitting is another piece of one inch PVC, which is capped. And then that cap has about a quarter inch hole drilled to allow air to vent the system. This is gonna allow for maximum flow going down the drain. Now, because I have water coming into the tank at a real slow flow, and you'll see that later here in the video, that probably wasn't necessary, but it does give me a little more flexibility if I want to increase that flow rate at any time. Now, coming out of the bottom of the T is gonna be a one inch piece of PVC pipe. And at the bottom of that PVC pipe will be a piece of flex hose that is gonna drain into my sump basket. Let me show you that so you have a better understanding of what I'm talking about. All right, so use your imagination, if you will, and assume that this one inch PVC is in place behind the tank into that T-fitting. Water's gonna drain down the PVC. At the bottom of the PVC, I have a slip fitting to a thread fitting. I then have a 90 degree barbed elbow. This one inch inside diameter hose is gonna be clamped onto the barbed fitting. And then that's gonna drain into my sump basket over here. My sump pump then pumps into my slop sink, into my home drain system, and away from the neighborhood. Okay, so here are some of the parts that we're going to need on the business end of the automatic water change system. The first thing we're going to need is a pump. This is a cheap Kedsum pump. I believe it's 800 gallons per hour. You don't need to run out and buy a $125, $150 Eheim pump. But you want to make sure you get a pump with enough flow and enough head height to move the water from your uh, supply to your tanks. This here is a 5 8 to uh, 3 quarter inch nylon adapter with a hose, a 3 quarter inch hose adapter on it. 
that's going to allow me to attach this splitter right here. By attaching this hose splitter, I'm going to be able to run two lines simultaneously, one to each of my tanks. Now here is a bag of various barbed fittings for quarter inch irrigation line with elbows and tees, and then of course the quarter inch irrigation line. But these are the parts that you're going to need. There's going to be one more part that you're going to need to hook up the quarter inch irrigation line to the pump. So let's go check that out. Okay, so over here at the RO reservoir, I have two lines in the RO reservoir, uh, two quarter inch irrigation lines. And each one has one of these Rainbird hose adapter to quarter inch uh, compression fitting adapter on them. And I think these adapters sell for about three and a half or four dollars, maybe even cheaper than that. They didn't cost much, just a few bucks. So I have two of them in the RO reservoir. See, there's one and two. So I put the splitter on the pump. These will uh, attach right here, like so. That way, um, not quite as much back pressure on this pump. Not that I, I don't think the pressure, <coughs> head pressure, really affects the operation of these pumps. I could be wrong. But this way I have, this. I should have the same flow going through both lines to each tank. I just hope this pump is strong enough to get the water moving through these lines. But So that'll be sitting down in the RO reservoir. And then the irrigation lines go up and come across and then drop down there'll be one drop down into each tank so that's the plan anyways i just hope it works okay so this here is a ten dollar wi-fi smart plug that i purchased on amazon and again i will link all of the products that i bought on amazon down below in the description i'm already using a bunch of these in my fish room i currently use them for lights I'm going to use this for the pump that controls the water change system and this will allow me to set up a schedule so I can turn that pump on and off at predetermined times and I get to dictate how long I want that pump on. So let me show you that real quick. I currently use the Tuya Smart app for all of my Wi-Fi plugs. And here you can see I have the dual 75 gallon water change but it's offline so it's not going to let me do anything. But we'll take a look at like the Pleco rack. I have two uh, rows of lights on all of my racks. This is currently off, but if I wanted to look at what time I currently have that switch and that light coming on, the second row of lights on the Pleco rack come on at 1 p.m. and turn off at 5 p.m. If I wanted them to come on again at like six and run for just a half an hour, I could set up a new schedule and have it come on select which day you want it to come on, select them all if you want it to be daily, select the time you want it to come on, save it, and then set a new schedule, and now you're gonna switch it to off, okay? You're gonna have it go off at a certain time. Really easy to use, and it just gives you a little bit more control and flexibility over some of the equipment in your fish room, but this is what's gonna make the water change system work, you know, you could use a mechanical timer, but people used to ride horse and buggy too. Okay, so I have both of the lines hooked up to the pump. You can see that sitting down in the RO reservoir. I've got the smart plug plugged back in. It's time to check it out and see if this thing's going to work. All right, I'm going to go ahead and turn the dual water change system on so the pump is now running and this is going to give you an idea of the flow that's going to be going into each one of the 75 gallon tanks it's not going to be a real fast flow but it's definitely going to be a higher flow than drip emitters just give it a second it's got to work out all the air that's uh, backed up into the line wait for it wait for it and there you go. And that's the flow that we're going to have going into each one of those 75 gallon tanks. Every time we turn on 
the dual 75 gallon water change pump. All right, YouTube, here is the supply line coming into the bottom 75 gallon tank. You can see the supply line coming down through the twin wall polycarbonate material. What I did is I drilled a quarter inch hole. I fed the irrigation line through that hole and then immediately inserted one of these T-fittings right here. And the reason I used one of these T-fittings is real simple. This nipple here that comes off at a 90 degree angle, this remains above the water line. So when the pump turns off, air is going to be pulled back through that and break any back siphoning possibility. If this wasn't here and I had the supply line below the water line of the tank, you run the risk of having the water back siphon into your RO reservoir or aging or mixing barrel. So it's real important to have a hole above the water line to allow air to come in and break that siphon. Now let's check this out. And there you go. Now I do want to take a moment and point out that the cost and the configuration is going to be slightly different if you choose to hook this system up to your indoor plumbing and use tap water as your water supply. You're not going to need to buy a pump and really the Wi-Fi smart plug has no purpose in this type of configuration. You're going to be using your home's water pressure to move the water through the system to the fish tanks. But here's what you're going to need. You're going to need to get some type of battery operated hose or sprinkler timer like I have here. You're going to want to add in a pressure reducer. Now keep in mind because you're using tap water, you're also going to have to remove the chlorine. So in addition to these two items, you're going to have to pick up some type of carbon filter, whether it's one like this or a DIY carbon filter like this here. But at the end of the day, it's still gonna be a very easy system that anybody can hook up. All right, YouTube, well, I know a lot of people are probably wondering how much did this cost? Well, depending on which configuration you use, whether you have an RO barrel or a mixing or aging barrel, or if you hook it up directly to your house supply lines, the costs are pretty similar. The total cost that I have into this system because I'm pulling it from my RO system, is about $52. If I hooked it up to my tap water, because you have to add that extra carbon filter, it runs up to about $65. But at the end of the day, that's still a fairly inexpensive, and this still remains a very easy automatic water change system. Now I know there's probably gonna be some critics out there. This is a very low tech system, and it's not gonna be for everybody. I get that, and that's okay. The whole point of this video was to demonstrate how simple and inexpensive an automatic water change system can be. Automatic water change systems aren't just for the advanced hobbyists or those with large fish rooms. Now, one thing I also wanna mention, I certainly understand that everybody's situation is a little bit different and you might have to get a little more creative with your plumbing. You might not have a floor drain right next to your tanks like I did or a supply line or a supply tank so close like I did. But if you can figure that out, for $50, $60, you can hook up an automatic water change system like I did here. At the end of the day, you have to ask yourself, is the time and the money spent on this system worth it? Well, the next time you're lugging a bunch of five gallon pails across your floor, you tell me. But anyways, with that being said, we're gonna wrap up this video. I appreciate everybody stopping by and watching. I wanna thank all of my subscribers and viewers. If you have any comments or questions, go ahead and post them down below. But until the next one, I appreciate everybody watching, and we'll catch you later.